If you're not first or last, unless you're secondary dominant. So today, we're gonna learn about secondary dominance because it's a pretty cool sounding thing that'll make you sound smart if you know what you're talking about. And we're gonna use this as an example. So what is a secondary dominant? First we have to know what a dominant chord is and I will link you to a video that goes more in depth for that. But basically this is all about creating tension and release. Okay, so what a dominant seven chord does is it kind of takes you in a direction that makes you want to resolve on the one chord. So we're gonna do this in the key C, everybody's favorite key, and the one chord is C. So we can just count through the alphabet to find where the dominant chord is. It is always on the five. So C, D, E, F, G, all right? So if we have a G dominant seven chord, that's gonna just sit out in space to make everybody uncomfortable until we release that tension with the, with the one chord, okay? So really important distinction you make from that five chord to the one chord. Dominant seven to the root key chord or the tonic as you will sometimes hear it called, all right? But what if I told you there was a secondary dominant? And it's a really versatile kind of thing that you can use if maybe you wanna take a composition or an arrangement somewhere. Like if you're having uh, trouble writing a progression that always wants to come back to C in the key of C and you can't avoid this, this is a really good thing to learn because you can actually go outside of a key, grab someone else's dominant, a secondary dominant, to kind of move a piece somewhere, all right? So a secondary dominant is any dominant seven chord that is taking you somewhere that is not the root chord, all right? Not the one chord. So if we're driving this chord progression somewhere, and uh, what a tasty chord progression indeed that we're driving, that isn't a G7 to a C, we can start incorporating these secondary dominants, all right? One of the most common ones that you will see is the secondary dominant of the six chord. So again, count through that alphabet, C, D, E, F, G, A, a minor is a very important chord in the key of C. So we might have a use in taking a progression to an A minor. So the way we find out A minor's dominant is just to count through A, A, B, C, D, E, okay? So E would be the dominant chord for A minor. Now E7 looks like this, okay? Second fret on the A string, first fret on the G string, everything else is open. Now, uh, the reason this doesn't actually belong in the key of C is because if you look where my pointer finger is right here, that's not a G sharp. That G sharp isn't in the key of C. So technically it doesn't belong there, but there's nothing technical about how tasty this jam is other than this E7 is leading us to A minor, okay? You can kind of hear a little bit of tension, a little bit of release. So you can kind of start driving a progression in a certain direction. And it's all about finding the dominant chord for any of these other chords in a key. So like we said before in other videos, every key has six main chords. One, two, three, four, five, six. The one, four, and five chords are major chords, two, three, and six chords are minor chords, all right? So the chords in the key of C are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor. I don't want to hear anything about this B minor 7 flat 5 chord because we're not talking about it. So any of those other chords, those other main chords in the key can have a secondary dominant that kind of leads you that direction. Because sometimes it's hard to maybe hone in on a certain chord other than the one chord or maybe even like the six chord uh, in a chord progression. So this is a really cool way that you can maybe go outside of a key to just maybe in passing grab a different chord that'll lead you there. And it's all about counting to five from whichever chord you're looking at, and then throwing a dominant seven chord voicing on that to lead you to the chord you're looking at, all right? So back to that uh, original chord progression that we had, we started in just a really average way, going to the five chord in the key of C, which is G7. You see this right here, it's just a G major bar chord with your pinky up. That gives you a G7, and that's gonna lead us to a C. I played a C major seven because I'm OG. So we've got G seven to C. Then we can go E seven to A minor. All right, so in between, tension, release. A different type of tension and release. 
Now the next chord I want to go to, I want to go to the four chord, all right? So C, D, E, F, we said that was major. So F major is going to be the next chord we're going to go to. Now we want to find the dominant chord that'll point us to F. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as a target chord, F being our target chord. How do we hit that target and kind of drive it towards that? Count to five. F, G, A, B, C, okay? Now again, I'm just kind of like counting through as letters in the key of F, there'd be a B flat, but essentially you can just use this uh, almost as a shortcut, right? So C7 would be the chord that leads us to F as a target, all right? Now I'm gonna choose to play this C7 right here. All right, I'm, got, I'm rooting on the eighth fret, the C on the low E string, my middle finger, seven A with my index finger, eight D with my ring finger, and 9G with my pinky. Really cool dominant seven chord voice. So we're also using different chord voices to kind of jump around here. Now after this, I can go to an F chord. I'm gonna to go to the F major seven, which is rooted on the eighth fret of the A string. You could easily take this to a different type of F chord. You could use a different type of C7 chord. Doesn't matter which voicing you use, I'm just kind of using these as an example. You can really use whatever you want, all right? So uh, again, starting from the top, we got G7 to C, E7 to A minor, C7 to F. Now we're gonna go right here. D7, I mean, you've probably even seen this chord voicing before. Again, does not belong in the key of C, but where does D lead you to? What is D a fifth of? You can kind of fill in some blanks, count backwards. But uh, again, we're going to a G, so G, A, B, C, D. A lot of times it can be confusing when you're first trying to pair these chords together. Once you start doing it a few times, it'll just become second nature, kind of seeing the fifth away from a chord. Because again, once you kind of get this down, you can almost start guessing where chord progressions are going in different songs, all right? So we really have four chords. You know, we could even think of this as like a four chord progression. C major, A minor, F major, G major. Really a super basic key of C chord progression. It would be a one, six, four, five chord progression. But we can really kind of just mess it up and get nasty with it by adding those secondary dominants. Again, the first one is just the regular dominant, primary dominant, I guess you want to call it that way. But uh, once we start adding those secondary dominants, it really gives it a lot of uh, a lot of flavor, which is what makes it such a, a tasty, tasty groove. So we've got the G7 to C, E7 to A, C7 to F, D7 to G. We can even play around with different chord voicings. However you want to do it. It's just kind of rolling around, grabbing these seven chords from different keys, and then just using them temporarily. Because again, you know, not all of these chords are always going to fit together, so it's kind of a really creative exercise that you can do to start kind of sewing them together, patching together your own cool chord progressions, and I think using secondary dominance is a really cool way to do it. And uh, just kind of a side note from that is maybe you want, maybe if you really like the sound of one secondary dominant, you can almost think of just using it as a borrowed chord. Again, a really popular one is using the secondary dominant for the sixth chord. So in A minor, we said that was E7. Maybe we don't even want to take it to the, to the A minor afterwards. Maybe we don't want to resolve it right away. Maybe we just want to introduce this chord into a chord progression to kind of find something cool, like maybe like, I don't know, like E7 to an F to a G. It'll just kind of fit, but maybe sound a little bit different. So this is also a really great way to just explore chords from other keys and maybe introduce them into chord progressions that you're maybe getting a little bit bored with. So secondary dominance, big fan. Really start kind of just seeing how things move a fifth away. Uh, I'll actually link you to a video I did on the circle of fifths, which I think is a really good companion video to using this because once you just see the fifth of every chord or every note. It really opens up a lot of, uh, just a lot of different possibilities that you might want to add to your playing, even if it's chords, if it's arpeggios, if it's lead stuff. Uh, dominant seven chords really do have an awesome tension and release thing that you can use in your own songwriting compositions. So hopefully 
you learned a little bit. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.